In this episode, we'll be talking about what's needed to close the gap between execution and design. We'll be talking about how do you design a great customer experience that spans across different cultures. And finally, how do you rate customer experience and why do companies get it so wrong a lot of the times? And here's the guest for this episode. I am Rianne and this is the Service Design Show. Hi all, my name is Mark Fontijn and welcome to the Service Design Show. If you're trying to design services that have a positive impact on people's lives and are good for business, then you've come to the right place. Because here on this channel, you get the chance to learn why some services fail and others succeed. For that, we go beyond the usual tools and methods and dig deeper into topics like design thinking, customer experience, organizational change, and creative leadership. So if you want to take your service design skills to the next level, know that we bring a new video every week. And if you don't want to miss anything, be sure to subscribe to the channel. My guest in this episode is Rianne van der Eyck. Rianne is the former Chief Experience Officer at KLM Airlines, where she was responsible for the customer experience across all the touch points. Currently, she's the Executive Vice President Customer Service Delivery at Dubai Airports. In the next 30 minutes, Rianne and I will be talking about what's needed to close the gap between design and execution. We'll be talking about how do you design a great customer experience that spans across different cultures? And finally, how do you rate customer experience and why do companies get it so wrong a lot of the times? So that was it for the introduction. And now let's jump straight into the interview with Rianne. Welcome to the show, Rianne. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, awesome to have you. We, we go back a long time. Uh, we haven't been in touch uh, that, that much uh, lately, so really cool to have you on the show. Um, Rihanna, you do a lot of things with customer experience, um, but I'm also wondering the term service design. Uh, is that something that's quite common in your field? And do you actually remember when you got in touch with that term service design specifically? Um, yes, I do. I think when I got in touch with that, it was with you. Um, so before starting in my position, I worked for Kayla. I was heading passenger service uh, at the airport. And one of the things we wanted to do is how do we involve our staff in becoming much more customer focused than they already were. Um, and that's how I met you. And you helped me and the whole team uh, on how can we use service design um, by designing, but also by involving staff and mm. having them realizing how important it is um, to design processes which do really meet uh, the needs of our customers. Uh, the, that period felt really like pioneering, right? This must, I don't know, 2010, something like that. We were really pioneering back then. Yeah, it was. It, it was a real great period because I, I think as we all agreed and, and the feedback we also got from the people working in the passenger service team, we did manage to really create this spirit and, and enthusiasm on, uh, you know, on one hand, in, including them, but also, you know, work is not just a, in, about including people, but in the end, really about delivering something which our customers experience to be different yeah, and really yeah. meet their needs. So that was really, it, it was indeed a great, a great <laughs> time. Rianne, you've gave me three topics that are on your mind that are dear to your heart. And uh, I gave you some question starters and we'll co-create the conversation. So are you ready? Yes, I am. All right. So I'll pick the, um, the first topic here. And I think this is a super relevant topic because a lot of people struggle with this. And this topic is called the link between design and execution. And do you have a question starter that goes along with this one? And can you show it up to the people? Yeah, I, I think you, you, you can do it. You can, I think, make different questions, but <laughs> I would like to use this. All right. How can we um, improve yep. the link between execution um, and service design? Yeah. And what is needed for that? 
Um, and and as, as I just uh, said before, and when you asked me the first question, um, if you look at, I, I really think service design is an art or mm. it's, mm. it's, you really need experts and it's not someone, not everyone can. At the same time, I think delivery is also a specialism. So it's those who are good at one are not per definition good at the other. And because of that, I think it's, it's of the utmost importance that you create a working atmosphere and you create an, a climate where service design people recognize the strength and the value of those who deliver and those who deliver uh, are aware of the need to have service design. Mm. And by, it's easy to say that those two parties need each other. Um, but I think in practice, again, you have to bring them together. And it's, it's a kind of iterative process. Mm. So you, you have an issue from a customer perspective, you brief your service design people, and then you should have some kind of a brainstorm with those who need to deliver to prevent you design something which is, you know, as I think we always say in office, designed in the splendid isolation of a headquarter uh, environment. So how can you secure uh, that those two parties really work closely together, try in practice how to service the first prototype or whatever you want to call it from the service design, design works in practice, bring it back to the service design and continuous until you have such a product that delivery says, yes, this is what we really needed. And customers really recognize the value of the product. And because of that, your process and your customer experience ends up being much better than before the process started. So, so um, why do you think there's such a big gap currently between design and execution? Why, why is it so hard to bring those two worlds together? Yeah, it's kind of funny if you say that, that there's such a big gap. Um, I think in some companies there is. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to say that where I work there's not, uh, but I think as you experienced as well, this is, I really believe in a model um, where people work in kind of matrix organizations or whatever you want to call it uh, together. But unfortunately, in many, in many, many companies, you still have silos with different KPIs with different drivers. And um, I think what really helps, and that, that's not very, it should be very clear at companies, but it isn't. My experience in my past few roles is if you're able to put the customer above everything you want, then all of a sudden the KPIs of the underlying department become less relevant because it's not about your KPI anymore. Can I deliver something which is on theory, great or on paper, or can I implement something where, you know, it goes quickly or is easy? No, you both serve the same goal. Is in the end, the customer experience going to be better? Um, and again, there are still a lot of companies for whatever reasons, whether it's egos, whether it's the lack of a joint customer purpose, whether it's people who don't work together, people who've never experienced it. Um, why I think a lot of beautiful designs, mm. great ideas, never mm. face reality uh, because those parties are not able to find each other. Yeah, and I, I think what you said, it, it, it really strikes me that, and this is what we also see in the daily practice, that um, people who have different KPIs within the same organization will do different things. They are motivated and driven to do different things and they don't necessarily uh, align with each other, right? And, and that no, and, and, and the word I didn't mention yet, but when I, when I was thinking, just thinking as well, I think it's really about leadership. Yeah, it's it's really about, you know, leadership should do nothing else than facilitate those experts to come together and design whatever they need to do. Um, and the and, only and KPI, by lack, yeah, but lack of good leadership, you know, those things very often don't happen. Hmm. And, the, and, and in that, the only KPI should be the customer experience, the, the, right? Yeah, I, I that, mean, that's of, the, of, of, of uh, course, a company also should look in the end at its financial sure. stuff and that. But yeah. I personally believe 
if your customer experience increases, that's when customers sure. are either willing to pay more and or are coming back. Hmm. So they will contribute to your financial KPIs as well. Uh, yeah. But it all starts with customers. One, one final question regarding this topic is you, you have tons of experience with this and uh, you just started a new job. You know, if you would have to do things over again with the knowledge that you have today, uh, specifically regarding this topic on linking these two fields, what, 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 what is your most important lesson? What would you do differently of or? Um, I, I think what I would would do differently is that if the subject, I, I think sometimes I can be too pushy on it. And I think you have to find a balance between having your beliefs and trying to share them or sell them or whatever, how you want to call it, and give people time space to find out, you know, to, to really want to do it themselves. Mm. Uh, in the end, it's so much, much better if, if people are pushing themselves, then I have to, to push them. You have to invite so, them into the conversation. I'm sorry? You have to invite them into the conversation. Yeah, but it's, it's not just inviting. It's, it's, yes, it's inviting, but it's also after you invite them, give them the, the time to mm. digest mm. and to, to follow up along their own uh, rules or experiences. And, mm. and it's, it's, you know, I can be sometimes a little bit impatient and sometimes, you know, someone once said to me, you know, slow down to speed up. Yeah, go slow uh, to go fast. And I think that's fast. a very good yeah. example that, you know, give them the time to embrace it and then move on. So that's what I think would, have, would do differently next time. Mm. Talking about moving on, let's move on to topic two. <laughs> yes. Um, the second topic is called different cultures. And again, an invitation for you to come up with a question starting and make an interesting question for yourself. Yeah. Um, let me see. I don't know. I think I will use the same one, it's a little bit boring. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but, but I will still say, how can we best design um, the most memorable, greatest, I don't know how you want to call it, um, customer experience, knowing that in my current role working at Dubai Airport, I have a, cult I have a workforce with many different cultures from all over the world. And my passengers are coming from all over the world. Um, mm. And so, so how can you combine those two and still get the best customer experience? Mm. And, you know, if, if, if I think about it, um, customer experience, according to me, is very much about, you know, studies have proven that people, 95% of the people take decisions based on emotions. So in a good customer experience, you somehow you have to touch the emotions, which means your basics need to be in place, you know, because you can never, I think, touch people and their emotions if the queues are too long or the seats are dirty or broken or security lines are too long or whatever. Um, but that's not going to make the customer experience. The customer experience is, is that personal feeling, that personal chat, that eye contact, that special question, reach out to your child, to the person mm -hmm. in a wheelchair, the person who didn't look too happy, the ones who, got, who just got married and have something to celebrate. So how can you recognize all those individual needs uh, and serve them? And then I come back to different customers and different um a different workforce. I think many people have the intention to say, you know, when it comes to different cultures, it's very difficult. And I really believe that you have to explain to your for workforce how should that customer experience look like. 
But if you want to touch the emotions of your customers, it has to be authentic. Mm -hmm. So within the set rules or frame of how you create a customer experience, it's really up to the individual to make it personal. Doesn't matter, you know, my customer experience being Dutch, I might touch you by being very open or frank. But if I'm a Filipino, I may touch you by being very service minded mm -hmm. or very modest. Or so I think the, the challenge is it's all about an experience. How should that experience look like? And then empower your staff to deliver from their own beliefs and their own authentic attitudes on how can they really make that experience different. And that's that's not easy uh, because you have to explain to all your staff how that is. Not in all cultures people are feel free enough or empowered enough or are used to the fact that they are able, that they are empowered or that they make those differences. Um, but my experience is as soon as people have experienced that they can make the difference in an interaction, they love it and they will just want to do more and do different and really contribute to all those interactions. Mm. So is one of the pitfalls or the common mistakes when thinking about customer experience that you uh, sort of define the end goal, but also define the path uh, towards that customer experience. They try to script everything, try to eliminate all the humanness. Yeah, if you, if, yeah you know, I, I think <clears throat> happily we all are programmed differently and some people are, are much better in processes and in in, in structures and some are more emotional, you know, it's the, the famous left and right brain uh, discussion. Um, but, but I really believe when it comes indeed to customer experience, it's, it's the frame within should be clear, yeah, because everyone should be able to talk the same language. We have agreed that within our customer experience, we want our customers to feel like A, B, C, and D. So that's defined, but how you deliver on that that should be your own individual, authentic uh, approach and delivery. Isn't um, that quite e exciting for companies to give, to empower their staff that much? No, yes and no. As, as I said before, you know, um, empowering staff sounds easy uh, because you, go, you can just say to your staff, you know, you're allowed to do this. Um, but some staff who are allowed who are empowered also take decisions which which were wrong or exactly. which were yeah. out of their remit or which were whatever so it's ask a lot of management intention to explain what it is to support them in how they should do it and not to hit them or punish them if they make a mistake so you also have to coach them in development uh, and develop them in getting to the right level mm. so i Personally, I think it's very rewarding, uh, but personally, I also know it's asking a lot for my time and effort to really empower uh, stuff. And of course, some will pick it up quicker than others. Mm -hmm. It's quite easy to say this is what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do. So everything above this decision, you have to bring to the next level. Mm -hmm. In the end, I think that I'm always going to be busy and they are only going to be escalating. So mm -hmm. I think it's, you know, we should, it's the productivity of a team increases if everyone is able to contribute more uh, and, and, and better hmm. and not everything has to go via my desk. Uh, yeah. But I also know managers and companies where that's still the case. And have you seen something in your practice that works especially well in uh, not getting people, getting staff to actually take action, to actually shift their mindset? Is there, is there something, I don't know, a training, an experience, or, you know, how do you get them over that step that they actually take ownership of that customer experience? Uh, yeah, it's, 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 I think in my previous job at, at KLM, uh, we, we managed very well because I think we, we, as a, as KLM, so not myself or whoever, we designed the, the purpose of KLM and we designed what the desired customer experience would be 
And then we involved all the different units to decide themselves how they should deliver on that customer experience, which is different for pilots than it is for a luggage colleague or someone working at the IT uh, uh, department. And, you know, I'm not amazed anymore, but I know uh, uh, quite a lot of people by then were, were quite amazed to see how many brilliant ideas came up from those groups on how they would translate that desired customer experience mm. into their own departments and what they needed to do to make it alive and committed. And, you know, if people design it themselves, you know, it's a little bit the first question we talked about when you have this joint process. If you're part of how you're going to do it, you are committed to making it a success. Yeah. yeah. And, and it was amazing to see how, how, what kind of ownership and ideas I would have never come up with, you know, they came up with and implemented into the, into the units. Mm. So it's, it's, it's really fun to see. And it's, it's, also, it's also giving people the excuse to actually think about this, right? Because it might not feel as they're part of their daily job. So you need to give them an excuse to actually take a moment and digest, ingest, think about what this means for them. Yeah, I, I don't know if I would use the word excuse, but I think it's, it, it's, it's indeed good that you mention it because, you know, we would have discussions in, 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 in KLM again where a luggage employee would say, you know, I don't contribute to the customer experience. Hmm. Yeah, and, and we would say, you know, if you don't bring that trolley or that suitcase with that very important present or whatever to the right aircraft, it would. Uh, and a, a ground engineer, you know, who wouldn't deliver the technical solution within the set time, he would be the reason why we would delay a flight. So if you explain it to them, uh, they all of a sudden realize, you know, I don't think we can blame anyone for what we've never told them. So we have the time to explain to them how they contribute and then give them the space uh, Mm. and the freedom again and the empowerment to decide how they can contribute to improving their own processes. Mm. So it's really, as I said, you know, wherever I've worked in the past five, six years, I mean, I wasn't that empowerful and whatever when I started. So let's be very open about that. Uh, but since I found it, it's a great way of working. Hmm. And maybe it's also something that you have to experience. You have to had to experience what happens when you actually empower people. What, what kind yeah. of magic happens? Hmm. Definitely, definitely. Let's move on to um, the third topic. And this is also, I know this is a quite uh, hot topic and it's, I've written it down as rating customer experience. Made it a bit difficult for you, I think, to make a question out of this, but uh, give it a try. (laughs) I think it's it's quite easy. Right. Uh, My my question would would be, you hurry up the why. Uh, Why do companies rate their own customer experience uh, often better than customers do. The classic example is this is that I, I think everybody knows the, the, the chart from Bain and company where it's 80 versus 8% or something like that, right? Yeah. 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 And I think wh- why that is very much again has to do again with the fact have we as management explained to our staff that the customer experience is a journey. It's not a touch point. Mm, mm. Um, and as a company, we very, and as an employee of a company, we very much have the intention to rate our own process, which is again, a very small part of the journey. So if I would be serving a passenger at check-in or on board, and my part was great, I would assume this customer is gonna grade my journey it's going to rate the journey as great, but mm-hmm. I never am aware or being informed that he might have been mishandled at another touch point, being mm-hmm. the lounge, when he called for a complaint, when he didn't get his luggage, you know, and it took three or five, or five days to deliver to them. So as management, again, we really, and again, it sounds, I think, very easy or, or, or stupid uh, almost, but we have to explain to our staff that they are a part of a journey and that we are as good as the weakest chain. And it, it's also 
you cannot, you have to own problems in your own touch points. So if you, if I would sell a ticket to someone um, and would say when I sold the, talk, the ticket, I've looked at the flight, you know, I couldn't seat you together, but I'm sure they will solve it at the gate. I raise expectations mm. with mm. the passengers that they will be seated together. You know, I've made them happy. I pushed it forward in the, in the journey. And as soon as those passengers get to the check in, to, to the gate, you know, the person at the gate might have to say, you know, the flight is full. I cannot seat you, uh, seat you together, which again, we've raised expectations and we have to disappoint them. So it's very much about realizing that again, it's a journey. I can I have to take ownership of my own touch point. I cannot promise anything which I'm not sure about another touch point can deliver on. Um, and I, and I, again, we as employees or our companies very often look at individual touch points. Yeah, and I guess that's also, that's my assumption. Is that caused by the fact that uh, internal KPIs or ratings are touch point based? So, you know, we don't, we don't judge the journey experience, we judge the experience yeah. in a touch point? Yeah, I think very valid, uh, valid observation. So if, mm -hmm. if you take again, an airline or an airport, which is my field, we, we do rate on, you know, waiting time for, for, for check-in or waiting time for boarding or throughput time at the security or, or all those kind of things. And, and in the end, you have to rate the whole journey uh, and give it and mm. give it back mm. uh, to all those involved in that journey on yeah. on how that journey was was for that for that uh, specific passenger yeah and how they've yeah. contributed to that maybe what their role was i i think one of the things we were talking about uh, at a different moment was um the the evolution that uh you have people like customer journey managers or people within our organization that are specifically responsible for the whole journey, right? Yeah. Is that something you still believe in or is that something that helps to? Yeah, again, in, I've just started in this position and, and um, I haven't been able to have that specific role in my current team yet. But I did implement, introduce the customer journey uh, uh, manager, director in the KLM organization, and I've left. So, of course, I have not the latest information, but when I was still there, it was different. It wasn't easy, uh, yeah. but it really helped by changing the mindset of every single individual and department. Yeah. Because we made, together with the customer journey manager, the representatives of the different departments responsible for a journey. Um, and again, if you make it joint responsibility again, you know, not individual KPIs, but the total journey uh, and that, you know, you all need to contribute to the weakest part in that journey in order to be a, to make the journey better. It does change the way people think and act. Mm. So I'm, I'm a big fan of customer journey managers uh, responsibilities into an organization. Yes. What, what was the, the biggest roadblock or hurdle you had to overcome to get people to believe you? To get, and I think this is especially on senior management level or maybe, I don't know, I, uh, the, the, the mid level is maybe even harder, but what have you found that people always challenge you on? Um. <clears throat> I think there are two things which are extremely important. And the, if it's about customers, customer journey, customer focus, whatever you want to call it, it has to start at the top. Um, you know, especially if, if companies are by origin or definition more operational focused or ROE focused or safety focused or whatever, and you need to change it, uh, that change need, really need to be supported uh, by by the top. Um, so that, that's one thing. The second thing is that you have to prove that it's serious. So it's not just a talk. Uh -huh. You have to walk the talk. And, and walk the talk means that you might have to set some examples where you do make an investment which might not be 
ROE-wise the best one, but proves that it's really about customers. And um, it's not just about investments. It's also, if we want to be customer focused, it means that I also am customer focused in my role. I also have to walk the talk. So I have to face customers. I have to treat my staff like I want them to treat the customers. Hmm. So it's it's all about, again, it's not just about the commitment in the top, but it's how consistent are you in translating into your organization, your processes, your leadership, your decision making, and everything what sticks with it. Yeah, you're setting the and example. Where, I'm sorry. You're you're setting the example. If people, if yeah. if if you're not credible, the rest of the organization won't follow. No, and 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 again, if you are in my current role at Dubai Airport, but also in KLM, if I am appointed to represent the customer, I have to breathe the customer. Because otherwise, you know, people are not stupid, you know, so they, I can have those beautiful and great presentations and slides and whatever. But if I don't act upon and deliver upon it, by real proof in the choices I make, it will always remain, you know, a paper story and it will never fly. Hmm. Um, so, so, and that's also the feedback I get from people when things become a success. It's because... They really see it's 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 honest. It's that what we need to do, and we all contribute to. Hmm. So those 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 small small success stories are super crucial in the beginning to show people that it's that it, it is making impact. Yeah, and, and I'm always surprised, uh, you know, to to hear back how those small stories travel fast hmm. as an example to the organization. So don't underestimate if you. If you do set three or five or eight of those examples, a lot of people will hear about it because people do share and, 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 and do say it seriously. Um, so so that's, that's nice. But on the contrary, yeah. Yeah. if you do something which isn't in line, it goes fast as well. It may be even faster. So, <laughs> yeah, maybe even faster. So that's why I say you have to be very consistent in everything you do. Yeah. Um, as all the guests on the show, I'm giving you the opportunity to ask the people who are watching or listening to this episode the question, is there something you'd like to ask us? Yeah, I do. Go ahead. And we, were, we, were just, we were just talking about the, um, the customer journey and, and, and you raised the point of how do you measure that? Um, we're very good at measuring throughput times at touch points, as I said, waiting times or, or you know, all those kind of things. Um, and, and the only, and I think you, your waiting time can be two minutes, but your experience can be horrible. And the only measurement I have seen until now is those smiley faces after you went through a, a touch point to push the button and smile or not. And, and I'm really looking for someone uh, or a company or whatever who could help me in how can I measure the whole journey. It's always difficult eh, because you can only measure the whole journey when they leave. So when how am I going to measure it when they leave? Of them, they're in the aircraft uh, or they've left the airport already. But I also want to have their last touch point into the curbside or when they're in the taxi. Uh, I don't all have their contact details and whatever. So who can help me on how do I measure the surface side of the experience, the customer experience, uh, over my journey um, in a good, consistent, and quick way? Hmm. Interesting. Really curious to what people come up with because I think measuring is, is a really under-discussed and underdeveloped topic still within our field, right? Yeah, yeah and, and it's quite difficult. So, so. I, I could really need some help with that. Good challenge, good challenge. Let's see what people come yeah. up with. Rihanna, yeah. um, uh, we, we've uh, blasted through all the topics. You had a great question. So the only thing that remains for me to do is to say thank you for sharing your ideas, your thoughts. Uh, What's really interesting to hear what you're doing right now. So again, thanks. You're welcome. I, I think it was, for me it was a joy to be on the, on the show. Every time I talk about it, I'm like, I'm, you know, this is really something, it's my passion and, and, you know, so the more people we can infect and the more people who have this view, I think 
the better the customer experience will be. So We're spreading the belief. Point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. To, thanks for the invitation. So what tools and methods do you use to effectively measure customer experience? Share your thoughts and ideas down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this episode, please give a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. And if you know someone who might benefit from what we've just discussed in this episode, go ahead and share this video with them. If you'd like to learn more, check out some of the past episodes or head over to the Service Design Show University at learn.servicedesignshow.com where you'll find courses by leading service design experts that dig deeper into the topics we talk about on the show. Thanks again for watching and I look forward to see you in the next video.